Hey guys, it's JP, and this time we're going to take a look at the last phase of the running cycle, which is the swing phase. This phase takes place right after the foot leaves the ground and ends the moment it is about to land again. To make this really simple, this phase takes place when the foot is currently in the air. Now, this phase can technically be further broken down into four sections, which are the pre-swing, initial swing, mid-swing, and terminal swing. However, we will keep it simple here for now and group them together. Now, from a performance standpoint, the goal in this phase is to basically get the foot forward as quickly as possible, so you can take your next step. The faster this takes place, the more steps you'll be able to take, which will ultimately increase your speed. Now, let's go over some things to look for during this phase and optimize the way you run. One of the most common things to look at in this phase is the heel recovery or foot clearance, which is how high the foot is from the ground. While people typically look at the foot itself, this is actually more so a result from how much knee bend or flexion that occurs. During the middle of the swing phase, the knee will typically bend a bit more than 90 degrees. However, this increases as you run at faster speeds like in sprinting, which can end up having angles around 130 degrees. It ends up looking like the heels are in very close proximity to the hips. Now the problem that many runners may get into is when they try to replicate this heel to butt pattern. You may hear cues such as try to kick your butt with your heel, however, the results of doing so may be subpar. This is because by only actively trying to bend the knee during this phase, you may look like you are running like an elite runner, but you would be missing the point of why that knee bend actually occurs in the first place. Now the reason for that is a knee bend may occur to reduce moment of inertia of the leg. By doing so, this may help the leg swing forward more efficiently and quickly. And that is the goal of this phase. So focus on the goal. Instead of trying to kick your butt, you can work on the push off from the ground or driving the knee forward. Both of these things will result in a quicker swing phase, which is what we want, and may result in the knee coming up closer to the hips naturally. Now the next thing we will look at is the heel and foot alignment as the leg swings forward. This is one of the reasons why it is important to look at the swing phase from multiple angles. The best way to find out if there is a heel whip is through the front or back view. When looking from the front view, the knee should basically be lined up with the heel. If the heel moves excessively to either side, this may be considered a heel whip. Now, how does this occur? This can be due to multiple reasons. One reason can be the way you push off the ground. If you push off the ground more on the inner or outer part of the foot, it may cause a heel whip to occur in either direction. The second reason is that it could be coming from the hip. Lacking hip mobility, strength, or coordination of the muscles around the area could cause a heel whip to occur as well. With heel whipping occurring, this may indicate excessive force is being directed side to side. By addressing this, it may help optimize forces directed forward and may improve efficiency and overall speed. Now, the last thing I want to go over during this phase is the arm swing. Remember that running does not only just involve the legs you run with your whole body. Now the more difficult thing about looking at this is that there could be a lot of variation with arm swing. However, this is not something to be too concerned about as long as the purposes of the arm swing are fulfilled. One of the biggest reasons for arm swing are to counter rotational forces coming from the leg pushing off the ground. By doing so, this may optimize force directed forward rather than side to side. It is also important to remember that the body works together as a team. Big variations in arm swing may clue in on deficits occurring in the legs. For example, if you see one arm farther from the body, this may indicate pain or decreased tolerance to running on the opposite leg. Another example could be when you see movement to where the arms are excessively crossing the midline of the body. This could possibly hint at limitations in mobility and control of the lumbopelvic hip region or increased forces generated side to side. And those are a few things to look at during the swing phase. Now, we basically went over each phase of the running cycle. Next time, I will explore certain running deviations and how I typically address them. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts and any feedback you may have. And as always, 
Thank you for watching.